another episode of Women's Wellness That Works. I'm Essential Anne, and my purpose is to inspire, empower, and guide women in their self-awareness so that they can be responsible for their health, happiness, and well-being. I'm so excited to have Vanessa Petronelli here. Yes. She is she has an amazing story, okay? So I <laughs> want to say I'm a fellow Canadian, but I'm not, but just because I'm with a, f- a Canadian. You're Canadian. I am Canadian. Yes, you're Canadian at heart. Exactly. It's so perfect. thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I yeah. feel this is such a blessing for me and for the women and everybody who's a part of this. So I'm very grateful to be here I with you. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate you too. So let's talk about you. Okay. You have, oh my goodness, I mean, the <laughs> stories and the, the journey that you have been at such a young age. And I want women to um, hear your story because it might be uh, resonating or impacting them at this moment. So why don't you share a little bit sure. about yourself? Sure. So yes, I'm Canadian, born and raised from Toronto yes. and now living in Southern California. Um, you know, growing up, I had a very, I would say, normal, blessed childhood, mm-hmm. um, but I always felt very different. I always felt like I wasn't from here. The world mm-hmm. felt like it was kind of a harsh place, mm-hmm. um, and I was very intuitive, very spiritually inclined as a child, psychic abilities, always looked out, you know, at the stars and said, take me home, yeah. <laughs> wherever that is, take me back. But, you know, part of this was also me being here for a reason. And I knew as a child that I had a strong purpose. There was a reason why I was put here at this time. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to fulfill that purpose, that mission in this lifetime. So at 14, I heard what sounded to me like the voice of God instructing me to go into the entertainment industry Really? Uh, God told you to go into the entertainment industry? It was very bizarre. I had no connection to that industry at all, but Toronto was like the Hollywood North at the time. Okay. And I hear this instruction that I'm going to be involved in this industry and I'm going to get involved in projects Mm -hmm. that would make a difference. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, that sounds great. Positive difference in the world. Let's do it. Had no idea how, how it was going to come together. That's the key piece. So many things orchestrated in my life. And all of a sudden, here I am auditioning for a female pop group. This was the time. I'm going to give away my age, and I'm totally fine with that. Um, <laughs> you know, boy, uh, Backstreet Boys and yes. NSYNC oh, and, love you them. know, the Spice Girls Absolutely. and all of that. Oh, I love them. You're so talking about my era, too. Yeah, it was, it, I think it's one of the best. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I ended up auditioning for this pop group, for, for a female pop group, and I got in. I had no experience, no, you know, background in any of this, but I was selected as one of the the girls in the group. You know, then I started to become an actress and I was represented with a top agent in North America for kids and teenagers. Then I started to model and I was going to school. So I was, you know, I had a very active social life. I was a very good student, you know, Mm -hmm. so I finished high school. I went to university, got my degree, but this was always, you know, plan A was Hollywood by 24. And so you knew from God that this is what you wanted to do at 14 years old. Yes. Right? Yes. You got it. 14. It was, I had beelined to Hollywood by 24. Mm -hmm. I would be in California being a part of, you know, movies and film sets where I would be doing, you know, projects that would make a difference and influence the masses positively. Mm -hmm. So you had this vision. The vision was I did. Always a visionary. So Long story short, you know, by the time I was around 18, 19, I started to, I stumbled, and I can't even remember how it happened, but I stumbled into personal development and spiritual development, and it just kind of happened. We almost don't stumble into it. It was not by accident. It's almost definitely a calling, or it was the time for you to receive. If you want to call it a spiritual awakening, that's precisely what it was, and I started to really turn my attention inward. You know, mm-hmm. I was in Landmark and Louise Hay's work right. found I love me. Louise Hay. Me too. Just, I mean, when I read that book, I was my mind was blown. I thought, self love? This is a concept. Exactly. Like, wow, <laughs> we can heal our lives <laughs> and our bodies. Wow, by I'm, loving ourselves. Yeah, it was it was truly mind blowing. And the truth was is that I had you know really struggled with even as a as a kid with body image. So this was something that has been, I think, one of my deepest and my most profound lessons this, mm-hmm. le- this mm-hmm. lifetime of really learning to accept my body, learning to love myself, and you know, being in an industry where you're scrutinized so much about how you looked, 
my wounds kind of chose that, right, yes. to, to learn how to heal that. Absolutely. But what was happening was the more I was working on myself and going through this transformational process and spiritually opening, I started to feel that a lot of the work that I was doing in the entertainment industry, and I was an entrepreneur too, I had an um, an uh, event marketing business. Okay, what when, haven't you done? I'm thinking. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like I've lived a few lifetimes in this lifetime. It's been a really interesting journey. Um, but I started to feel like everything was just scratching the surface. There was no depth. There was no real positive difference. You know, here I was working with brands that were, you know, polluting the environment. They weren't making a. Di- they were saying that they were healthy for people, but they really weren't. And um, and, and here did I-, I did I read or hear that you were also a, a Lululemon? Uh, yes, Lulu- that uh, was later. Ambassador, ambassador for a couple mm-hmm. years. Yep. Yeah. So basically, I, I left the industry at 24 by divine intervention. I was supposed to come to L.A. because I always dreamed of being in California. And I got a virus on my face, mm. which caused me to not go to L.A. And right. God kind of saying, here's the two by four. You're not getting it that this is done. Mm-hmm. You know, for you, it was not feeling aligned. It was not authentic for me to be doing that. But I had mm. such a strong will to just kind of make it happen. So I went on a path of soul searching and I took about a year to really um, discover what was going to be more purposeful for me. And um, I had had this you know, idea, I didn't know it was a thing, about becoming a coach earlier in my 20s. And then I had my first life coach at 23 when I was a singer in the industry mm-hmm. um, who challenged me and said, you're not, you're not cut out for this business anymore. And that's mm-hmm. why I pushed to go to L.A. to prove to myself and to him, like, no, I can, do, can it. do it. I'm going. Um, but I discovered yoga in this you know, time away from the industry and leaving my business and you know, started to meditate. And a lot of my psychic gifts started to come online because of the relationship I was in at the Mm. time. I was with somebody who was not faithful, Mm. but I didn't trust myself. I still Mm. didn't love myself to know that I deserved better, even with the idea. You were worthy of more and better. Yes, and that relationship was the catalyst for me to really stand powerfully in knowing that I was enough and deserving and worthy of more, but Mm. bless this individual's heart. Mm. Um, He was the catalyst for all of my energetic abilities, my psychic abilities to come out a lot more powerfully. And that's when I started my business. I went back to school in a post-grad and opened my business. And for over 13 years, almost 14 years in a couple months, I've been helping thousands of people all over the world really get connected to who they are. I work mostly with, you know, visionaries, leaders, creatives. And so your journey, obviously, from 14 to where you are now, every step that you've taken has prepared you for this moment. Of course, right? of course. There's been no mistake. I mean, I ended up in California, but I had to let it go. Mm-hmm. My husband's American. So mm-hmm. it's so beautiful the way life sets everything up so perfectly for absolutely, us. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So what have you learned through this journey? <laughs> Name two things. Two things, yeah. <laughs> Top two things. Be, we could be here for an hour. I know. Top two things I would say, and honestly, really trust the process of life and trust God's divine plan for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, those have been the biggest pieces for me. You know, we love to control oh, our lives absolutely. and ourselves and everything in it. And mm-hmm. I was a controlling person for mm-hmm. a long time. Not necessarily with others, but very much with my life because I didn't fully trust my intuition Mm -hmm. and I didn't trust that God had a divine plan Plan. just for me as we all do. And had I been so forceful with my own will to make everything happen, nothing would have worked out the way it did. I think expectations lead to disappointment. Oh boy, do they ever. So I know my personal experience when I've controlled things in my life, things don't necessarily go the way I think they should go and then I get disappointed. So let go and let grow. It's so true. It's so true. And it's been the most powerful lesson for me. Yeah, that is wonderful. And so now you are in holistic health and coaching people. And so what do you do to nourish yourself and your body? 
so that you can be there in service of others. Well, that's just the thing. I can't be of high of a high level of service to others if I'm not taking care of myself. Mm-hmm. And I've learned this the hard way because mm-hmm. I've had health challenges mm-hmm. from so much burnout and mm-hmm. working and giving so much of myself without right. replenishing. And right. that's something that I think is chronic for women. Yes. Especially. Especially women. We love to give, don't we? We just love. We have so much love and capacity to give. I agree. And I know it's really tough for us sometimes to receive. And so for me, it's been really about what is going to most nourish my body. And sometimes that means taking a few months off of being Mm -hmm. in service to others. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I can't be afforded that luxury, you know, it's the little things that add up every day that I do. So for me, one of the most important elements, because I do so much deep spiritual work, you know, in my personal life and with my clients is getting centered and getting connected to my higher self to God, to really having prayer and meditation every day in my life. Um, I do a lot of work for my health and my body. I I look at it this way. When I'm teaching rituals and routines to clients, it's really about having something for the mind, Mm -hmm. to engage the mind, something for the body, and something for the soul. Ah, And so I try to do something every day. And really, for me, it's about checking in and being like, okay, what what is most joyful and alive for me? Because the one thing that I can see that happens with these kinds of routines and self-care can start to feel like a chore. Right. It's right. like this to-do list, and I'm and like, oh, I don't want to do that. I think with women, because we are so busy and we are multitaskers, and we don't have time for a bath or a shower, right. let alone. But here's the thing. What I always say to women is just do one thing for yes. yourself one day. Mm -hmm. Just one thing for yourself, and that could be walking, that could be going to the beach, that could be just taking a nap or even journaling. Just do one thing for yourself a day, which you do. Yes, yes. And and it can be five or ten minutes. It could be 20 minutes. It doesn't have to be an hour. It doesn't have to be an hour. But the the key to it, I found, and that's really worked for me, is it makes me feel alive and it brings Mm -hmm. joy. Yes, it brings joy. So let me ask you a question. So what does it mean to be a woman? Mm, It means to be a powerful creator. Mm. The the creatrix of our reality. Creatrix, I like that. Yes, I mean, we truly are creators of life, Mm -hmm. creators of what we do in the world, and we have the power to change it. There's no doubt about it. And when women come together, that's where there's so much beauty and intention and Mm -hmm the creative energy that Mm -hmm. flows through each of us. And that's part of this whole mission is really linking arms and supporting one another. Yes. You know, and, and, and being blessed in that because Mm -hmm. when we support each other, we can do anything. We can rise up. Yeah. And we need that. We need that in the world. So what does beauty mean to you? Mm -hmm. Beauty means really honoring all aspects of yourself and really seeing the beauty that lies within you, not just physically, but also spiritually, energetically. I mean, beauty is something that I think is carved from the inside out. Mm. And we've placed a lot of focus that beauty is from the outside and then in. Right. You know, anybody can be beautiful Mm -hmm. when they feel beautiful within themselves. And age is? Age is really just a number. I know that's so cliche, but age is something that I don't think we should be afraid of. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something we should embrace in our society. Mm-hmm. You know, as we begin to age, there's more wisdom, there's more life experience, yes. and our bodies and our hair and our face and, you know, our internal self just continues to flourish and show, you know, the, yeah. the ways in which we have lived as a human right. being. I, I say this term aging gracefully. Yes, it's true. And we can do that. I think yeah. it's really about embracing age in our culture that's so obsessed with youthfulness. And my purpose is? My purpose is to really empower and connect with leaders and entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. and creative professionals and really help them to design the solutions for a new earth. For the new earth that we are here to create where we all thrive and flourish. And you are doing that right now. Thank you. Right here. So thank you very much for being here on Women's Wellness That Works. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you definitely want to find out more about Vanessa. So where can, where can people find you? Yes, I'm on social media, on Instagram, Vanessa mm-hmm. Petronelli, on Facebook, on YouTube, on LinkedIn. Just type in my name and you will find me. Yes, we will find you for Thank sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. So if any, any of this resonates, if you love to learn more about Vanessa, definitely subscribe.
subscribe to Essential and share this video with all the women that you know. And remember, every woman has her story. What's your story? Until next time, we'll see you at the next Women's Wellness That Works episode. Take care.